All right, here is another technique video, technique, technique warm up. I'm gonna go for hopefully about 10 minutes or so. And we're gonna look at different mechanics just of the right hand. So it's gonna be open strings. We're not fretting anything in, in normal tuning. The other one that we've done so far was the 45 degree angle. And we had also talked about rest stroke where you go through and rest on a string below. There's the upward slant that I'm going to look at today. Uh, lots of players like Django and Van Halen, I believe, use this a little, a little bit more. Um, there was a scientific study that talked about this being like throwing a dart. So if you were to have your hand quite loose and relaxed, loose and relaxed usually means smooth, and smooth is fast, and fast is smooth. So we want to have the hand quite loose this way. We want to avoid any tension of holding things rigid or stiff or squeezing muscles. We're trying to keep it as loose as possible. And apparently this position is one of the positions, some people call it the fallen wrist, but it's when we say fallen wrist, it's not um, fallen and tense. It's fallen, like it's just uh, loose. There's no muscle tension. And another aspect of that is also how you hold the pick. So I'm gonna use the round side of this because I like this, um, it reduces resistance for the, when I have the, this fallen, fallen wrist or the loose hand reverse dart th thrower position, which becomes quite loose. It engages a few different things, the forearm rotation, but in a loose style which is great for, for strumming and also engaging this type of technique, which you can get really fast. You can do tremolo picking and it's very loose and relaxed and quite healthy on the hand. Again, there's no tension, no squeezing, no force of any kind. It's, it's literally just hanging completely loose. Now, when we hold the pick, we don't want to grip it tense at all. It's really, really loose but we will reinforce it, not with squeezing, but with placement. So how I do it is instead of having my fingers straight out, which sometimes I don't get much cover coverage on the pick, I make sure that I have my thumb covering most of the pick. There's only a small bit of it sticking out on the side there, you'll see. So it's really just like this tiny little bit sticking outside of the thumb, because it's really the thumb. Imagine it's just your thumb with this little bit on the side of the thumb that's picking it. So avoid closing your fist tight, because you'll see that creates tension. Have it open, loose, and relaxed, but not forced open, because that's tense as well. If it falls loose and it hangs, it kind of looks like that. I call it Lego hands. Kind of looks like Lego hands, but loose. So with that, I'm going to, I am going to curl my finger, but not with tight muscles, relaxed muscles. My thumb, it's kind of like a, uh, an airplane pilot holding a button like this. And we're going to put the pick on the side and the thumb cross. So instead of having my finger straight, I'm going to curl my finger. So my finger and my thumb are pretty much in line. So that gives me a strong reinforcement without using muscles. So there actually I was tensing up. I'm gonna loosen that up, keep it as relaxed as I can. There's an open space as if you were to hold like a baby, baby chicken there. All right, holding it loose. Using the round side of the pick, not the pointy tip. You have to move around to see where your fingers open up and are most relaxed. Um, see, I had to make a micro adjustment. So we're holding the pick not by force, but by coverage. So if I hold it like that, it's going to be much more loose. I would rather have those lined up. So this finger is covering a good portion of that pick, and so is the thumb. So I'm very loose, and my pick doesn't fall because of coverage, not from squeezing. So loose grip. Finding that relaxed spot, 
getting good coverage, then you should be set to, to pick in the most efficient, relaxed way. So we're gonna do some warm ups. I'm gonna start by, you'll notice I let the hand hang down and there'll be a bit of a fall and wrist there, depending on how your arm and everything hangs on the guitar. What I'm gonna practice doing is you'll see there's a slant where the pick is slanted upwards, which allows me to ramp through the string, kind of like I'm, I'm sliding through without getting stuck. If I were to go flat, I might get stuck and I don't wanna do that. I wanna ramp through and I'm gonna bounce off and rest on the string below. So upward pick, slant, pointing up, to, if, like be almost up towards my heart, right? So not flat into the guitar, slant it upward. And then you get that loose wrist, loose hand. So just trying to find the best physics angle here to practice this um, slanting technique. Again, reducing resistance. And here we go. So picking up, going through and resting on the string below it. doing it for the fifth string. Then going to the string below it. It's a rest stroke, fifth string. Keep everything really relaxed. Deep breath, fourth string. String below it. These are called rest strokes when we Go through the string and rest on the string underneath. You see I have this, it almost looks like I'm about to skip a rock or throw a dart. And it gives me this ramp. It's a pretty ideal picking position. I think Django and Van Halen, some players use it. But you'll notice it's quite different than the other video where I have my hand <coughs> more on the saddle resting.